Now, what I'm going to show you guys in this video is a response from Jeff Kaplan directly to the one trick problem. This is actually really huge, but what I want to show you first is this pro player called Effect. Now, he plays for Dallas Fuel. He is arguably the best tracer in the entire world. He is an extremely good player. However, he's been having a really bad time on ladder, and it resulted in him rage quitting and then writing a letter to Jeff, and I'll show you all of this, then I'll show you the response. But just so you guys don't take this out of context, let me explain what actually happened to Effect on this day before you see this clip. So, basically, he was getting a lot of... Um, shall we say, Symmetra one-trick players who were sort of throwing games and a lot of trolls. And then when he did get a good game, uh, he had a player called Fisher, who's obviously from London Spitfire, uh, one of the best tanks in the world on his team. And then somebody on the team just left, so the game got cancelled. So he was getting progressively tilted. And then he goes into a game on Iconvolve, which you're about to see, and he gets a Symmetra on attack, and he literally breaks down. After he breaks down, he then writes a letter to Jeff. So what we're going to watch now is the effect of, well, the effect of, on effect <laughs> of the game um, in its current state in competitive and then his response and then we're going to go over what Jeff says because Jeff has directly responded to the one trick issue and we can, yeah, th this is going to be very interesting. So let's get stuck into this. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. How would you team? Fuck you! Fuck! Dear Jeb Kaplan, hello, I'm, <laughs> I'm Effect in Dallas Bear player, I played comp competitive game and I met uh, so many uh, one trick and DPS player, master DPS player, My my score is <laughs> super high, but I met mm. so many one trick and DP master DPS player, and I'm lose so many time. Please fix Overwatch. I wanna play this. Always my team is super so Why? Why, Jeb? Please. What is answer? So you notice the fact there was going, oh no, I'm being put with Master DPS. What he means is he is the best, well, well, not the best DPS in the world, but he's one of the best DPS players in the entire world. So he would like to play DPS. So when somebody of like Master rank picks DPS, um, that's obviously not great because if you look at, let me break this down for you. So a Master player is a good player. A high Master player is much better than a low Master player. A low GM player isn't really that much different from a high master player, and that's kind of where I put myself, uh, like, in Overwatch at the moment. A high master player is a, like, on a different level to a low GM player, like a totally different level. So comparing them to a master player is completely different. And then if you go top 500 and then beyond that go pro, you can see effects problem. It would be like if I was a master player and I wanted to play DPS, but then I had to play with, like, silver DPS. That's kind of the way it would be. So effect did sort of... Um, focus on that a little bit too much but what he's saying is he wants a role select basically doesn't like one tricks and he wants to be able to play the heroes he wants to play because he's a dps player not somebody who should just be filling or having to deal with dodgy comps and it's the same for everybody right but because this is a pro uh jeff and the team have taken notice and responded to what uh, he actually put up on the forums now what we've got here is the message from jeff now i'm going to read this off um i'm going to put it on the screen Ta-da, there we go. I'm going to read this off and then we're going to break this down because this is very, very interesting. Dear Effect, I love watching you play. You are so incredibly talented. I am very aware of the frustration you are facing and the issues that you talk about are part of our daily discussions. Well, I mean, the first thing which is good there is they're talking about competitive on a daily basis, which is, which is great. Fixing the one trick issue is extremely complicated for a lot of different reasons. There is a spirit, freedom, and creativity to the game that we are eager to protect. But I also believe that, especially at your level of play, other players can cause a detrimental experience. Now, what interests me about this, guys, is, you see, <laughs> clearly they want to fix this one trick problem, but also they don't want to restrict you uh, based on what heroes you, you can play or what team comps you want to play because there's a creativity in the game uh, that they want to protect. Now, 
my video I put out yesterday, uh, which sort of was on the same topic as well, I think this is sort of like an idealistic approach to Overwatch. It's like a naive approach in a way. It's like, yeah, we want this beautiful game where everybody can play whatever they like and it'll all be fun and fine and dandy. But that's not the case, is it, guys? I retweeted a post on Twitter yesterday where, um, you know what? I don't actually have it up, but I'm going to bring it up because this 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 post was, was great because I, I remember I retweeted it and I was like, this, 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 because it made so much sense. It, 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 was, it was glorious because it literally explained in great detail um, very concisely <laughs> what, what it's like in competitive. So it said this, I find I become inflexible through flexibility. After spending all night playing tank or heals, I eventually, I eventually stubbornly lock in who I want to play regardless of the team, justifying it with I flexed all night. That's not what you want, Jeff. That's not what we want in the game. We want people to go in, play the heroes they want to play and form a team. That's what we've got to somehow try and work out. Not sit around with like, oh, hopefully people will you know, form teams because it just it just isn't working. He then goes on to say, I don't have immediate solutions to your problem that don't drastically change the face of Overwatch. But I do want you to know that we care and that we are very engaged in brainstorming solutions. You see, so this is again the problem. Anything they do to competitive, if they bring in role select, if they do something like that, it will change the way this game is played currently. Now, they do have history of this and they have changed the way the game has been played in the past. If you remember, there was no limit on hero selections back in the uh, the very early stages of Overwatch. This meant that a lot of your games would have two Winstons, two Lucios, two Tracers. <laughs> that would be your team, right? Then that kind of changed to, I think, two Zens. It was two, two Winston, two Zen, to uh, Genji or like to Tracer. That's basically what it turned into. And if ever there was overtime, everybody played Tracer. So there were literally 12 Tracers jumping all over the point. It was ridiculous. They went back on this and they were like, oh, actually, we are going to bring in a hero limit. But if you think about what Jeff said in the earlier paragraph, where he says, look, we don't want to sort of curtail your creativity and freedom. They have, have, they've got a history of doing this if it's in the best interests of the game. And it was at that point. So they limited the number of heroes you could have on one team, well, to one. So you couldn't just play whatever the hell you wanted. Now, you can understand why it, it, it did begin like that. Because imagine if I wanted to play Torbjorn, but this... Uh, and God forbid this ever actually happened. There were three other players on the team who also wanted to play Torbjorn on attack on... Um, uh, Volskaya Industries, <laughs> just to make it even worse. Um, you could have four Torbjorns. Yeah, that, it, it was a dark time for Overwatch, but they went back on that and they fixed it. Another very famous example is when Jeff said, um, we would never have Deathmatch. And then we got Deathmatch. It was like, okay, well, now we've got Deathmatch. So there is, there is light at the end of the tunnel. They may say things like, we can't do this or we don't want to do that, but they do change in time. And I'm very sure that Jeff is in tune and with the team, they are in tune with the community sentiment. And I think they can only really take so much of this before they really start, you know, have to make changes and, and well, change the way the game is played because it is just, well, anyway, Jeff goes on to say, changes will not happen fast on this subject. But with that said, we have placed urgency on ourselves to make a change. I, I mean, I'll read that again. Changes will not happen fast on this subject. But with that said, we have placed urgency on ourselves to make a change. So they're saying the changes are not going to happen fast because they're going to be difficult to make. However, we have placed an urgency on the team to make this change. It's almost as if he's saying this is our priority. Like, why would Jeff even respond to this forum post as well? Uh, sorry, this was a post on Reddit, on uh, competitive Reddit, uh, where, where effects video of his, uh, his love letter to Jeff. Well, not really a love letter, but his, his letter to Jeff went through. So obviously it's on his mind, else he wouldn't reply, right? For example, one thing we are ex uh, examining now is all of the reasons players do not want to group with each other when they play. And there are currently a lot, some real and some perceived. Now, this is interesting, right? I think this is um, indicative of the way Blizzard approach problems. They are looking at the big picture. They're not just like reacting like I do. Oh, just give me role select. I can't be bothered to play with these people. I want a proper team. Let's go. Instead, they're like, okay, let's look at the problem from the... Well, let's look at the bigger picture, right? Number one, why do players not want to group with each other when they play? So if we can fix that, maybe we can start making them group together. And I think this is the path we're probably going to go down. Instead of them just coming straight out with what I think Jeff would see as a, a, a sign of defeat, going, okay, here's roll select, just whatever, pick your hero and go in. I think they're going to try and almost coerce the community into grouping with each other in a better way. Hello, guilds, 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 hello, guilds, guilds. I really like guilds for this. Or in fact, this was my original um, solution to the problem, but you'll see 
that even now I've become more hardline in the fact where I'm just like give me give me role select because I just cannot take these bad games that I'm playing it but before we get to that a guild system would be awesome because that means we can group with each other before we go into the game and everything will be fine and dandy um currently we don't have that yeah we've got like past players with played with oh maybe I like this Winston player I'll play with him um so maybe we could group and go into the next game but that never happens does it because you just come out of the match and go straight into the next game you don't really group with anybody um you could, you could actually say there's really no incentive to do it which again is another problem um but anyway with the guild system maybe you could maybe this would change before we even got into the game or maybe that's just wishful thinking of me I don't know anyway Jeff goes on I wish there was a world where Overwatch players felt like they could play with who they want this would be an immediate solve to the problem but we are a long way from achieving such a state yeah well again this is like wishful thinking oh I, I wish i wish i could go into every game of overwatch and everybody could play every single hero and they'd be like wow um we need well i'll, I'll pick the, the the main tank or we need another support i'll play it it's cool and then they're on the microphones or they're, they're they're talking in text chat or at least they're in the voice chat and they're like yes guys we can work together yeah, no, that never happens, does it? And that's never going to happen in online gaming because it's online gaming. Um, so this, again, to me, is this could actually be, I don't know, this this could be Jeff sort of consigning defeat here and saying, look, this is what we wanted, you know, in an ideal world where everybody's friends with each other and we all play nice and we all get on with each other. Um, that's what we designed the game to be, but obviously it's not the case, so we're going to fix it. I've always been on the side of the argument here of um, it's not really about the community to fix this because I, I think the, 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 the <laughs> I know I'm stuttering a bit here, but I mean, I have made videos that I've got millions and millions of views combined on Overwatch community, on trying to be positive, on trying to be, you know, all of this stuff. It has made no effect, really. I mean, it's minimal. I mean, it's probably had an effect, but it's not like a solution, is it? This has to be something the game does. This has to be a thing the game does to almost force people to be friendly with each other, force people to play together. Anyway, Jeff goes on to say, in any event, please know that I hear your frustration. We'll do our best to make Overwatch better, not only for pros like you, but, but for everyone who faces similar challenges. All the best, Jeffrey and the Overwatch team. Now, you see this kind of response. It, this would be an awesome developer update. Because this is real. This isn't like, it doesn't feel like we're, we're, we're dodging issues here. It's just Jeff literally saying, look, I wish people could play together in this game, but they can't. So we're thinking about solutions. I'm sorry that you feel like this effect, and by extension, literally everybody else that plays the game. We're thinking about this daily, and we're probably going to do some sort of change. But it's going to take a long time, because it's going to be fundamental to what Overwatch is. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Stylosa, and this is Unit Lost. What do you think about Jeff's response to the uh, issue or, well, fixing the one trick issue? Do you think this is a good response? Do you think this is a bad response? I honestly believe, like, I, I've met all of the Overwatch team. Well, most of uh, probably all of them. Um, well, no, that, I've, I've not met all of the team. That's ridiculous. I've met most of them, and I know they love this game. I love this game. Anything I say about this game, which might be seen as negative, is not because I'm hating on the game. This game, and I will always say this, and I have always said this, probably like it has for the developers, but this game has changed my life. My life is completely different now, and it would not be like this without Overwatch. So I speak from a position of passion on the game. I'm not like just hating on the game because I'm some sort of crap YouTuber, you know, just like, I want views, so I'm going to make somebody. No, everything I make is to try and help the game, make the game better, because I'm genuinely invested in this game. And I know all of you guys are as well. And you guys show that by the comments you leave on the videos. Guys, I've been Stylos and this is Unit Lost. If you enjoyed the video, then like the video. You can follow me on Twitter, which is at Unit Lost Gaming. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Toodaloo.